Okay. Hello, everyone. It's Lee again here uh, speaking for the Teachers of Health Professionals Google Plus community. And we have with us today Tracy, Tracy Fortune, a researcher and teacher in the field of occupational therapy based at uh, La Trobe University. Tracy, thanks very much for joining us. I've been looking forward to talking to you through uh, Hangouts on Air. And uh, could you maybe start us off with giving us some information about your context, where you teach, what you teach, and how you came to be there? Yep. Um, I started at um, in the Department of Occupational Therapy in about 2004 um, as a senior lecturer. Uh, I'm uh, currently the course coordinator um, of the entry level program. So we have a bachelor entry master exit program. Um, for the purposes of this conversation though, um, I'm the coordinator of a subject um, OCT5 MSP, uh, Macro Strategies for Practice, um, and in that, that uh, subject is a capstone uh, subject in our final year, a 10-week subject um, in which we try to uh, broaden students' thinking out towards some of the bigger picture issues that are impacting on uh, health. Um, so we uh, situate um, their learning largely in a project-based learning experience uh, where they go out into agencies and um, together uh, with the agency scope out um, a project uh, to address um, some sort of health, welfare, service development or quality assurance issue. Um, alongside that work integrated learning um, aspect, students are also coming to class or uh, having um, teaching and learning around the key topics um, in terms of macro strategies. So they uh, have some learning around project management. What is it? Getting them ready to actually go out and do the practical side of project management. Uh, we talk about what a macro issue is and um, expanding that out from what they have already been focusing on, which is largely micro level individual client concerns. Um, we look at health promotion as a macro uh, response to the health burden. Uh, we look at service development. Um, so the concern there is not so much on uh, what are you doing for patients, but what uh, is the health service doing to, I guess, continually review and develop the service so that is, um, I guess as good as it can be for patients, um, clients, okay. um, yeah. And uh, you've started uh, quite an interesting project uh, to podcast the, uh, loosely speaking, the lecture component of the mm. subject, but it's we'll get to that aspect, it's far broader than lecturing. Yep. But can you tell us, uh, you, you're making a move towards online teaching. Uh, and, and learning to support this subject. Yep. Uh, can you tell us how you, why you came to to be in this position? Why are you doing this um, this sort of development? Yep. Um, I guess one of the first um, things that that kind of prompted that we needed to move this way was in about 2005. Uh, one of the other lecturers here um, had a contact up in Arnhem Land and came to see me and said, look, you know, uh, there are four or five projects that if we could send students up there, they could do uh, the project-based learning uh, around some Aboriginal health issues. And um, so would that be possible? And I said in the current format where we're tied to having um, teaching face-to-face, um, we just can't do it because they they were at that point coming in on Monday and a Friday and managing the project, um, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So really we were tied to a Melbourne Metropolitan Project um, learning situation because of that and still, we are still, that's still the case. Um, apart from now, we have the Bendigo cohort, so because they're doing their teaching in Bendigo, they can obviously do some rural-based projects. Okay. Um, more recently, I had uh, a student come into my office uh, early this year saying he had uh, contacts with a, a charity in Thailand. 
can I please do my project in Thailand? <laughs> and again, I we had the conversation. I said, look, this may be just the the extra kick that we need to really try and get the subject um, in a more blended online format. And mm. here we are. And here we are indeed. And uh, just welcome to our viewers who have just uh, tuned in. We're talking to Tracy Fortune, a researcher and uh, teacher in the field of occupational therapy at La Trobe University. Tracy's talking us through some of the background and context of how she's come to, to be developing one of her subjects into an online mode. And that mode, uh, Tracy, you've chosen to develop a podcast. Um, can you tell us a bit about that, how mm -hmm. you came to do this and how you're going to approach mm. it? Last year we had the idea for one particular week of this 10-week subject where we actually always used to get three or four um, practitioners or experts, members of the professional association come in and present, it was basically a panel presentation where we'd get each of them to talk for 10, 15 minutes on their take on what the key contemporary issues were impacting on the profession. Um, every year we would have difficulty finding the right people. Um, and we've also had trouble getting, you know, a full cohort of students to come to those sessions. Um, last year, and it didn't happen in time, um, the thinking was, why don't we try to record those sessions, interview them and somehow have that content so that if we could develop some sort of um, integrated package, whether it be that students can go to an online web page, in LMS, um, that we had links in, that we could have these podcasts in the link. And it was really at that point just about this one session. Uh, we would have experts talking for five to ten minutes on questions, specific questions that we could answer to, to sort of tailor, I guess, the real message that we wanted students to hear. Um, it just for all sorts of reasons didn't happen. Um, and here we are kind of thinking bigger and better and I'm, I guess what I'm trying to do is to look at the key content issues over the 10 weeks and think about, well, rather than me standing up and giving a lecture, um, you know, I've, and, and given the fall off with students coming to the face-to-face -face sessions, we've had big problems with Echo 360 um, that we could just, just actually... Viewers, sorry to interrupt you there, Tracy. Echo 360 is a lecture recording system that's um, a lot of Australian universities are running this system and it just, it just records the audio from the lectern in a lecture theatre. Yep. Uh, sorry, Tracy, on you go. Um, you know, that if we could have these more intense, targeted to the point sound bites, if you like, um, that could speak to... Uh, the issue of the week and that we had some other supported learning experiences around that, even if it was um, going to material um, otherwise captured on LMS, that that, mm -hmm. that, that could really work. So um, we're now at the stage where uh, we are talking with people from the field, experts, um, be they practitioners, people from the profession, from beyond the profession, who could really best speak to these topics in a way that A, is flexible for students so that, that we won't necessarily have video, that we may just have audio, um, meaning that, you know, they can listen to it anywhere if they're in Thailand or they're in Arnhem Land, that they, you know, that maybe that's easier than trying to get the, the visuals as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. I mean, uh uh, one thing, too, well, there's a couple of things that are not a, uh, that's significant in itself that you're recording um, guest, guests and experts talking about topics in macro, health, macro strategies in health. Mm -hmm. uh, and I recall from your project outline that not yes. only is the content um, targeting people doing that subject, 
but it's yep. also targeting people in the professions who may have Absolutely. interest in, in this this con this um, sort of content. Yeah, I mean that that was the other um, side of this sort of getting some real bang for our buck here in that mm. not only are we speaking to students as members of the profession, but that if we had it openly accessible, um, whether that be on a Department of Occupational Therapy website or whatever, mm. um, that members of the profession could come and listen, watch um, these presentations, which because they are about macro issues in the profession, that they, they will be really relevant to a much mm. wider audience. So mm. yeah, there was part of this was also um, bringing the Department of Occupational Therapy out <laughs> into the world a little bit. Mm. Mm, yeah, 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 and I recall also that a significant part of this project was to develop and embed down the, the workflows necessary to sustaining this effort of developing or running a podcast program, uh, so regular episodes uh, and interviews looking at this sort of thing. Could you yep. tell us a little bit about the steps you're taking in that regard? How are you going to bed this down, given that the lecturers in your department, like all lecturers, have already filled up their time with existing workflows. This is something new that you're introducing in here. How, what steps are you going to put in place to make sure this becomes a regular thing and sustained in the existing workflows? Um, can you give me a bit more of an idea of Okay. What so, you um, well, if, if people are... Um, up until now, have been too busy to do this sort of work. Right. Yes. No. I've, I've got you now. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the the things we had to really think about was we 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 are reliant on Echo three hundred and sixty, and we're going to lecture theatres and hoping that that everything works. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is making sure we've got some the right equipment. Uh, is that what you're thinking about? Um, yeah. To enable people to have some control over the material that they that they are presenting in lectures. So, for example, um, we have guest lecturers coming. Uh, it doesn't get recorded. Um, uh, our own lectures don't get recorded beyond Echo 360. We're not able to do very much with um, the Echo 360 recording. So, part of what we needed to do was do we have the right equipment to record um, any interesting thing, any any potential learning material, um, or is it sort of just flowing out the door? So part of that is that we will have the equipment here. People can decide if they want to actually record their lectures with the little Zoom uh, I've recorders. Got one of those here, as a matter of fact. Yep. Um, just whip those out. So we do happen to have these. Yep, that's Zoom, the ones. Uh, H1 recorders, handy recorders. Yep. Yep. So I think just just sort of, you know, getting that infrastructure sorted means that people have got the option to to record what they're actually currently already doing, and there's no real change to practice there. But they've actually yep. got it to use it for multiple purposes that are not just driven by the LMS. Um, although obviously, you know, things can be embedded in LMS, and that's probably where we might go to start with, just to stick with what people know. Um, yep. uh, we have also, um, we are also purchasing um, a more uh, robust four track recorder, which we can use to um, have, you know, office based interviews and um, we have that option. We've also set up a relationship uh, with yourself um, and looking at being able to record uh, people through Google Hangouts, um, which I think is a great option, and also we will be looking at um, doing some recordings over um, with Matt Smith. Okay. Um, Matt Smith, uh, he works at La Trobe University, maintaining um, the iTunes U channel for La Trobe, as well as supporting staff in doing uh, good recordings for that channel. Yep. And then we have sort of all sorts of options about, you know, what again, what we can do with those recordings. Mm. Um, yeah. And so, uh, what's already in place before you've gone to this podcast is you already interview experts in the field. Uh, the, the Without new... capturing it, though, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's sort of a key thing. That's right. So the key thing is you're now recording it. So you, the, your colleagues will have to learn how to make 
as good a quality recordings as possible yep. with the equipment they've got. I mean, personally, I, I think the smartphones with a good microphone into them, they make good recordings. Yep. Uh, and then you can, because the smartphone's connected to the internet, it's quick to upload it from there. And, yep. and so they're going to have to learn those workflows of how to make a good recording, hmm. how to get it into a space that can be put online for people to access it and those sorts of things. So, I yep. mean, relatively speaking, that's a fairly, it's, there's a, there's a stuff to learn there and it takes a couple of months of re weekly regular uh, contact with, with these new techniques. But once that's down, uh, everything flows after that. So you probably have mm -hmm. to make some space for your colleagues uh, yep. for two or three months, one time a week, looking at these sorts of methods. Hmm. Yeah. yeah okay. So we we sort of um, I talked about the the project um, at our recent staff uh, meeting. So now people are aware of it, and the ne the next step is obviously to get the message out that this option is here, and to really think strongly about recording their work. Mm. Um, or if they go somewhere and speak, for example, I mean staff get invitations to speak quite regularly. Yep. It you know the people who are there. It might be in another state. It might be just at a in, at a hospital. Um, people that are there might record it, but we don't necessarily get that get access to that that information. Mm -hmm. So it's just really keeping all these you know learning resources um, and deciding what you know what we can do with it to mm -hmm. um, expand our options. I suppose um, last year, oh and this year um, for another one of our subjects, humans as occupational beings. Um, a couple of members of our staff had some training via CTLC with making videos um, to be used in teaching. So, I mean, you know, that was about learning, learning videoing skills. So, mm -hmm. being able to utilise all of that um, as well. Uh, yes. And this, I guess, I'm doing something slightly different. And part of my thinking was that there's a real, with people out in the field, they may not want. To have their face on, <laughs> yeah. uh, they may just want to speak, and the, the the whole audio only aspect for some people is quite appealing. Yeah, um, no, it's very convenient. I mean, right now I'm commuting mm. big time, um, two hours each way <laughs> each day uh, mm. to work, and about an hour of that is on a bus. And if I'm trying to watch a video on mm. on the phone, I could have downloaded it. You know, I'm car sick within five minutes. But if yep. I can just look out the window and listen to the audio, much yep. much better. Yep. So it has a lot of benefits, the audio for sure. Yeah. So so that was a big part of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, another part that, you know, this would probably come later once the skills for uh, recording the audio and publishing it were down, is that it seems reasonable to me to imagine this work as producing a radio program. We call it a podcast and we call it an educational podcast. But yep. essentially you are doing the same sorts of things as a radio producer. You're identifying yep. the interviews, lining them up, making sure they're being recorded and putting them up. But there's something else that a lot of radio producers do is they break that up with good music or um, some do advertising and things like that. So later down the track, I guess I'm suggesting is you might um, start listening to free music such as the freemusicarchive.org yeah. and uh, find good tracks that you never know. You might find stuff that's even... Um, about the topics that you're teaching and hmm. you know, in between interviews offer a nice music track up. Anyway, that can come later, a theme, yep. a theme for the uh, theme song for the program, things like that. <laughs> Who knows where it could lead. Yeah. All right, Tracy, so that's, that's really uh, good. You're, you're on your way. How far, wh when are you doing your first podcast? When, what's, what's going um, on? What I've got uh, one interview uh, lined up which will be over with Matt Smith. Um, because he has um, a, an office set up with really good sound. So uh, in the first instance, he has also offered to narrate the opening. Um, but I think after that, when we get our wings and we learn much more about this um, kind of approach, we'll be able to do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but 7th of, of uh, November is the first interview. Um, we may... Uh, have more more then. So um, my maybe colleague in this, sorry maybe yes use this is your first interview telling us about the project. We could. Uh, my colleague Carol McKinstry up in Bendigo is also lining up her own interviews. So we both, 
I guess, uh, manage uh, macro strategies for professional practice in our respective uh, locations. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that there are people um, that Carol's aware of speaking um, to a rural and regional audience that there may be topics there that, that we can include. So together we're hoping through this project that we have about six to eight, um, you know, 20 minute um, conversations at maybe yeah. that some of those people will um, record multiple topics with them in that 20 minutes so that, oh, yeah. that you know, yeah. keeping them really short. Yeah. Um, because there are a number of folk out there who can speak to a couple of different issues. Um, for example, we have, have some people who have a lot to say on project management, but because they're working in service development, they can speak a lot about service development. Uh, because they are working in situations of negotiation and conflict, they can talk a lot about political skill, which mm -hmm. is another topic that we have in the program as well, the ability to develop those capabilities. Yes, I'm personally looking forward to the podcast going out because I know I could use some tips on political skill. Yeah, I think we all could. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you an inventory. There's an inventory you can do. Righto, righto, I'll do that. Well, Tracy, thanks. This recording um, goes up on the Teachers of Health Professionals Google Plus community page and uh, then across to the Wikiversity page on blended learning and online teaching and no doubt uh, places after that given the copyright license of the work and where it's been placed. Tracy, thanks for um, outlining your project. Good luck going into it. And, thanks, um, Lee. We'll come together again when you're some way down the track and see what you're learning about it. Thank you very much. Okay. Stay on the line there. I'll say my goodbyes privately, but I'll just end the broadcast. Okay. <laughs>